Alright guys, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of Making Gains and I'd like to welcome you to the question and answer video, the 5,000 subscriber question and answer video. Now, I would be lying, look guys, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't slightly disappointed in the amount of views and comments that I got, but you know, what I will say is that the ones that I did get, I really appreciate. Um, you know, I guess 5,000 subscribers seems like a lot, but when you're still struggling to get, you know, 150, 200 views per video, you know, what can you expect? I did get some good questions last night before making this video. Hang on, we're going to focus this up again. Focus on me, guys. Uh, last night before making this video, I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to put my dignity on the line. I'm going to put my neck on the line and <laughs> make a post on Instagram asking for some questions. Now, that's something that terrifies me to do um, for the simple fact that I'm scared I'm not going to get anyone uh, asking me any questions. Now, luckily, I got three additional questions. So we've got probably about eight or nine from my YouTube video. We've also got these three uh, from the Instagram post. So with that being said, I'm going to head outside and find a, a little place to sit the camera down. Sit outside in the crystal clear blue sky, as you guys know. It's, uh, it's a stunner of a day. And um, we're going to get into this. So, you know, I've, I've been putting it off because I didn't have enough questions. So, I don't know how long the video is going to be. It's probably, well, it's about two minutes long already. So, there you go. I'm going to get a coffee. I'll see you guys outside in a minute. And we'll crack into this. Peace. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Uh, what the fuck have I done here? Oh well, that'll do. Uh, where are we going to sit guys? That's the next question. That looks like, that looks pretty comfy, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll sit on that. Behind, behind the scenes guys, we're going to stick the camera on top of that. Some more height here, you know. Can't have it too low, can we? Alright. Ah. That's about right. <laughs> this whole time, this whole time I've lived here, I thought this was a fucking muffler from a car. But it seems as if it's a some sort of medicine ball bag. What the fuck are you with this? <laughs> Alright, coffee, I'll be back. Nick Minute. <sighs> right. Alright guys, now before I start this, I want to say that it is completely off the cuff. I haven't, I honestly haven't looked at the questions for ages since I posted that video probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, subscribers right now, this current time, I think it's about 5,080. So we're, we're still climbing, you know, it's it's certainly not as fast as what it has been in the past, but you know, I, I realise that I'd be getting sick of this series if I was you guys too. I mean, it's been 365 days of, you know, the same sort of stuff. I'm looking forward to branching out into different topics once I've closed the book on the series but you know like like they say one book closes another opens and um, I'm sure I'll be on to something you know even better after this so with that said we're gonna we're gonna have a look at the YouTube comments let's do this what the f <laughs> I just checked my 5,000 subscriber Q&A video someone's given me a dislike what the fuck man who would dislike that shit there's only 106 views anyway, so anyways, alright, so how many comments we got? We got nine comments. Alright, well, we'll go from the bottom. Stranger, sup stranger, question number one, why don't you get a tan? Well, I could do a joking answer, I could I could answer this seriously. Seriously? Because I'm shit scared, man. I'm shit scared of um, looking different fucking, I guess I scared myself by getting that, you know, extremely dark tan with my comp. That was the first spray tan I'd ever got. <laughs> it was a fucking competition tan, so I think I scared the shit out of myself, but, you know, if you're ripped, if you're defined, you know, having a tan is good. If you're not, I'm 
not that fucking you know ripped right now, so it's not an issue for me. But obviously, being here in such a sunny place, you know, you'd think I would get a tan from the sun, but I don't because it gets so hot throughout the summer here that everyone is inside. Everything, you know, every single workplace is air conditioned. Fucking, you just run from your car inside. It's so hot outside, but you know, I, I got a feel for the guys who uh, work. You know, in construction and shit like that, it's like, nah, fuck that. I couldn't do that here, man. But anyway, ask, <laughs> answering your question. God, I, that's the first question I fucking rambled. Question number one, why don't you get a tan? I'm scared, man. It'll happen. Question number two, how's it going with the girls? Well, uh, well. So, this guy, Stranger, comment me your real name, bruh. Um, I've seen you, I've seen you around the channel a bit, so. Question number two from the same guy, how's it going with the girls? Well, I'm single, let's put it that way. Uh, the girl that you, <coughs> you know, you've heard me talk about in the past, she's not in my life right now, um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm better off for it. Like I, like I kept saying in the previous videos, you know, if, you, if you start putting all of your effort into one person, you, you start forgetting about yourself and what, you know, what goals and dreams you are going to achieve yourself. And, you know, um, yeah, uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot more positive now. You know, girls, fuck, I have some girls over here and there, but uh, you know, it's nothing serious right now. So we'll leave it at that. Holy shit, he's got five questions. <laughs> okay, number three. What's your plan about gyno? Will you ever do surgery, or did you get over it? You never talk or complain about it. Well, quite honestly, guys, I'm over it, man. I fucking am. Um, you know, maybe I have to. You know, wear certain tops, certain cuts to sort of hide it a little bit. I am conscious of it. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, every morning I wake up and I look at it. There's no doubt. It's it's been something that I've done and looked at for fucking years, and that's not going to change. With that being said, you know, I, I would like the surgery. It's a, it's a big cost. It's like six grand. You know, seven grand if you want to go to a reputable uh, surgeon around here. So. And plus it's the travel to get it done. Um, it's gonna put me out of the gym for you know three or four weeks. It's like, is it really worth it? I think if I was gonna you know, try and jump on stage again, it would be worth it. I, I'm not prepared to get on stage again with gyno showing. It's, it's you know, it, it didn't show as bad as probably what it could because I didn't get as lean as what I could have for my shows. But if I did get to a true 5% body fat, fucking hell, it'd be really obvious and um, especially under those lights and stuff. So if I was going to compete, I'll, I'll probably get it done. Once again, it's a huge cost, but uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not bothering me, man. It's really not. And in the future, I will be making another Gynecomastia video. Um, you know, just moral support for you guys out there because the other one that I did make did go really well. So, um, you know, I was, I was really happy with the, the amount of comments and support I got through that. So. I will be, you know, in turn giving the support back and making another video. So look out for that one. Number four, is your future in bodybuilding contests or CrossFit? Well, like I said before, um, I would like to compete again, but you know, I, I'm not big, man. I'm not fucking big. I don't have the genetics to hold a lot of muscle uh, at a lean body fat percentage. So I would like to compete as a natural, a lifetime natural, once more before. You know, stepping over that dark side, but with that said, you know, for me to do that, I'd have to get my gyno sorted. So I'll let you guys know whether it's going to be CrossFit or bodybuilding. I haven't hit the, I haven't gone to, down to CrossFit for four weeks. Um, I've actually put it on hold just because of the fact that I've wanted to just get back into my gym training, um, you know, get back to my bodybuilding stuff, start trying to put on some size again um, that I'd lost. But you know, I love CrossFit, I really do, but that's the most fun I had. So thinking about it now, I will be going back to CrossFit. Will I compete on a bodybuilding stage? Who knows? Who knows? And number five, do you waste your time with video games? No. That's an easy one. If I do play video games, it's not by myself. I enjoy uh, playing against someone. And my favorite games are sports games. So FIFA, NBA, Rugby, uh, you know, Madden, even golf. Like honestly, I'm sports obsessed, and that's the way it goes for when I play video games as well. So that's that's the last question from him. He says, "You're the best man. Hope your channel grows much more. People that are real like you 
deserve much more. And I want to say thank you, mate. Thank you very much for that. All right, second question, or second person. Ella Barnett, what do you do for a job? Well, I am a disability support worker. Well, that's what I started as. So what that means is, you know, you'll have, whether it's physical disabilities or, or intellectual disabilities, uh, these people will live in, you know, a specific house together, and we go in as shift workers, you know, 12 hour shifts. So I'll either start at, 12, at seven in the morning till seven at night, or seven at night till seven in the morning. And I'll probably do three, four, even five shifts a week. And what we'll do is we just care for them, we look after them. Um, basically, you know, our mission statement is to provide these guys who are restricted due to their disabilities with an unrestricted life. You know, we want them to integrate into the community, whereas, you know, otherwise without us they couldn't do that. Um, the guys that I look after are intellectually disabled, so they're not physically disabled. They can walk around, you know, they've got fully functioning a fully functioning body, it's just up here, it's not fully functioning. Now whether that's due to birth defects, whether that's drug induced during their early years, um, or alcohol induced, you know, we've got a few, a fair few different cases, and I, I can't really delve into too much because it's, it's, it's a government position, I work for the Northern Territory Government. Um, there's plenty of NGOs out there, which is non-government organisations, which, you know, have, ta have houses throughout Alice Springs. Um, I work for the government agency, doing the same sort of thing, so, yeah, I started as a disability support worker at the bottom, then you've got a supervisor as well, and then on top of that we've got the management team. So, so first of all I worked for about a year and a half as a support worker, trying my best to you know, um, improve my, my skills and impress the place, and then after a year and a half I got a promotion to a supervisor, and that is where I'm, where I'm at right now. So I've been there for over four years now, so I've been in the current role as a supervisor for over two and a half years. Um, I've learned a hell of a lot. It's prepared. It's you know. It's it's grown me up. I started in this job when I was 22. I was a kid. Now I'm nearly 27, and I feel like I've matured a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, I've come into my own a little bit, and you know, when I do decide to move on, I think I've got a really good skill set there, as far as you know, patience, empathy. Uh, you know, communication is key. I'm working with guys who who can't communicate properly. You know, how how are you gonna communicate with someone who can't communicate properly. You've got to think of different ways, you've got to you know, learn their vocabulary. Um, it's cool, it's a really cool job, you know, we have fun, we take them out to, on a, excursions, we take them out to the movies to, you know, to see family, um, things like that. It's cool. It's a cool job, I'd have to recommend it, but yeah, disability support, that's where I work. Next question, Daniel Hayward, will you ever do a full cut again? By full cut, I assume you mean cut to the stage or cut to you know five percent body fat, which I've never been to before. Um, will I ever do that? Well, like I said in the previous um, question, I want to. When that will be, or you know, what federation that will be in, um, I, I couldn't tell you, man. I want to. I want to get really shredded again, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Okay, next question. Will, hang on, let me have a drink here. All right, next question. Will there ever be another rugby video now that you're a big fucker? <laughs> well, thanks for that, mate. I wouldn't call myself uh, that big, but um, will there ever be another rugby video? Well, I'm glad you asked because I get asked that on, on a daily basis, I really do. You know, my, if you look at my most popular videos, they're all rugby videos, so I'd be stupid to say no, wouldn't I? I want to keep growing my channel. Um, you know, I think that is my niche is rugby. And so, with that being said, once I close the book on this series, making games, I will be making some more rugby videos. So uh, that's going to be fun. I fucking love rugby. You guys know that. Um, <laughs> I could talk all day about rugby. So if you want that, that's what I'll do. Anyways, next question: Sam Schofield Flynn. When did you start lifting and what motivated you to start? 
this is fucking interesting, isn't it? I'm finally getting asked these bloody questions that I see all of my other fitness YouTubers get asked. Well, it all comes back to when I was five years old and I picked up my first bodybuilding magazine and I saw He-Man in the stores and... No, 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 that's, that's not how it happened. Not at all. Um, I think that, you know, as a teenager, I'd always played rugby. Um, as a teenager, I started, you know, looking around and, and seeing muscular guys and thinking, shit, you know, my frame, I've got, you know, quite wide shoulders and stuff. I wonder if I could ever look like that. And so at age 14, I got my first gym membership. I made my dad take me to the gym. Um, it was a gym that allowed young people to come in. It was actually a boxing gym in Christchurch called Crichton Coppers. And I went there at age 14. Uh, me and a friend from school, we used to scooter there at age 15. And then I, I stopped. Like, you know, back then it wasn't a passion. I didn't know about bo I didn't know about bodybuilding. I actually had I had no idea. I'd never seen a bodybuilding show. I'd never seen someone on stage. So at that point, it was just because I played sport. I I remember actually enjoying the pump. Oh, I think all we did is train arms. But anyway, so that was 14 and 15. From there, I sort of let it go till I was about 18. So throughout school, I was still playing sport, rugby, soccer, basketball touch. Those are probably my main four. At about the age of 18 I uh, went out into the workforce and you know I never had, the thing about me is that none of my mates ever wanted to go to the gym. I remember at age 18 you know on a Saturday, a Saturday afternoon we were all getting ready to go out drinking because that's what we did every weekend but I was, I was at the gym and I had to get my session in before I went out drinking because you know <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. I was, I was getting passionate about it. I was starting my you know, that fire was starting inside. So that was age 18. Age 19, I, I, I let it go. You know, at this point, I had not watched any YouTube videos. Um, I just started taking progress pictures. So, you know, I knew that, I knew that I could change my body, I just didn't know how. So I was just, I was going here and there. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't committed. I didn't really know what I was doing. And then halfway through age 19, I'd moved to Australia. So. For about the first three months, I didn't train when I came to Australia, so I'd lost everything. So, you know, age 19, age 19, I came to Australia. I'd lost all my gains. You know, I was pretty, pretty skinny, probably about 84, 85 kg um, skinny fat at six foot tall. And then, so I started working at the gym. Um, I'd, I still had that passion. I knew I wanted to go to the gym, and I started working at the gym behind the desk. You know, being surrounded by guys, I'd look at guys come in the door and think, "Fuck, he looks good. How did you do that?" And you know, it was being surrounded by that environment that really got my passion going. And so that was at age 19 and three quarters. And so following that, you know, for about six months I worked there. And you know, every single night um, after I closed the door at nine o'clock, I had to go, go into the weight room by myself. Um, I'd lock the door, I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd steal a protein shake from the fucking fridge that we sold, I'd go into the gym and you know, train the house down for an hour by myself in this gym and I thought, holy shit man, that is so cool. So, you know, I was, fuck, I was passionate. Thinking back now, I, I trained hard, you know, I, I wanted to make gains, I was really, I was really um, into it. And then I met a girl. <laughs> I met my, the only girlfriend, the only serious girlfriend I've had here in Alice Springs, so, well, in Australia. and. Um, so at the age of 20, we moved down to Adelaide and I stopped training. Uh, I, I lost everything. <clears throat> so at the age of 21, I moved from Adelaide back to Alice Springs. I'm 26 now. And I'm gonna show you guys pictures of when I was 21, I moved back to Alice Springs and this is when I first went back into the gym. I, I, I took these progress pictures and I'm so happy I did because you know now I've got something to look back on. So I'm gonna show you guys three pictures, one from the front, the back and the side. This is at age 21. From there, that's when my, my passion really ignited again. And I started going every single day. And that's what I've done since then. So it's been you know, five, five and a half years of consistent training, watching YouTube, learning as much as I can. Even the first two years of those six years was still shit. But honestly, in the last three or four, it's been really consistent. My nutrition's been on point. I've known what I'm doing. And that's been through YouTube and through um, educating myself like you guys are so that's that <laughs> god I talk a lot
I really, I probably shouldn't be drinking this on, at the same time, but anyway. I hope you guys are enjoying it. What mode? Let me get back to the fucking question. When did I start lifting? Well, 14 for a year, then I dropped it. Went back at 18 for a year, dropped it. Went back at 21 for five years, and here we are. What motivated, what motivated me to start? Well, you know, Definitely working in that gym and seeing the physiques walk past me motivated me to, to start, you know, educating myself. And that's where it all fucking started. So, uh, carry on, let's go. Alright, next question. This isn't a question. I just wanted to say how much I loved your videos. Thank you, mate. That, that makes me feel really happy. Thank you. Next question. Rider Sharpshooter. What was your best rugby try? Jeez, what a question. What a question. I really like that question. Thanks for asking, because it's gonna it's gonna you know force me to rack my brain here. But um Oh god, that was my best rugby try. Shit, have I ever got the winning try? Okay, no no, it's it's not my best rugby. Is it mine? <laughs> I don't know, there's been plenty of tries. You know, I'm I'm on the wing, um, or at fullback. <clears throat> Predominantly, so you know most of my tries are sort of just you know coming around the outside and finishing off a move, or I might get the ball and do a you know one foot step inside the last defender and, and score, which is always a nice feeling. If you score without being touched, it's it's a nice feeling. But what I will say is that when I came to Australia, I started playing rugby league, and I played for a team called the Vikings, and we won it. Uh, in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and we lost it last year. So in 2014, which was my final year of playing, I haven't played for the last two years, in the final, grand final, <laughs> 40 all, and the, the siren had, had gone, okay, so it's 40 all, grand final, we're going for the fifth in a row, I believe, and the other team got a penalty kick. So they got a penalty at about 40 metres, they got a fucking gun kicker, the, the whistle's blown, we're all, we're all like fuck, you know, he's going to kick this, we're going to lose 42 to 40. Anyways, the game was on fucking on video as well, so we all got to see this at the end, but this was fucking epic. So he took the kick, it missed to the side of the post, it didn't go dead, we grabbed it, okay. We, this, we, yeah, the team's full of fucking superstar runners, so we went this side of the field, it's, it was like rugby sevens. Passed it back this side of the field, just looking for a gap. We passed it this side of the field, and honestly, this this you know tackle, this one tackle, because obviously once we get tackled, it's all over. This tackle lasted about a minute, a minute and thirty seconds. So we went this side, this side, this side, this side, and look, I don't know how the hell it happened, but we went the length of the field after full time and scored. Okay, and the whole team touched the ball. I'm not even joking. We got thirteen players on the field. This was the Best team try you'll ever see in your life, and it happened after the final whistle. So if that's not epic, I don't know what the fuck is. So that would have to be my favourite try of all time, man. To win the grand final after the final whistle, thinking you're going to lose it, and then on the last tackle, just making it all the way up the field. Everyone touched the ball. It was like every single pass that was given off. It's like don't drop it, don't drop it. And then we scored, and it was just amazing. So, anyways, that would have to be my favourite try, and I I didn't even score it. Okay, and the last question from YouTube, Baron L, or I, Baron I, when do you plan on competing again? Anything you're going to change going into it? Well, when do I plan on competing? I've, I've answered that. Uh, in the future, sometime, I couldn't say when. I do want to do it, but you know, we're going to have to get that surgery done. So, anything you're going to change going into it? Well, for one, the, the gyno surgery, I assume, unless I just really don't give a fuck and I just get out there anyway. Um, the only reason I wouldn't is, you know, for people to think that I'm taking steroids. So if I don't care about that, then I don't give a shit. I might get up there. But anything going to change going into it? Well, oh, my diet. You know, the ability to refrain from cheating. Um, I achieved a lot on my last diet. I'm not going to lie. Um, so anything going to change? Probably the length of time. You know, I probably want at least 16 weeks. And whether I do it naturally or not, I, I'm not sure. I couldn't say. So, read between the lines there, guys. I don't know. Anyways, that was 
that was all the questions on that particular video. And now I'm going to go to my Instagram post and have a look at that. First question, Harry Jackal. When did you start lifting? Well, I've answered that one. Haven't I? Sorry. <laughs> Rock and Fest 313. What did you decide about going back to school? Now I assume this guy's talking about um, personal training certificate. Mate, it's something I, I think about every day still. I, I still want to do it. You know, I, I, I want to do it, but I know that I don't want to do it the traditional way. I don't want to work at a gym, you know, waking up at four in the morning and getting home at fucking nine at night. Um, you know, I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather stay in my job and, and do personal training on the side. With that being said, I'd love to be an online trainer, man. I'd love to be able to you know, work for myself, take my laptop with me and be able to work anywhere. That is a dream, that's a real goal, and you know, I'm gonna do whatever I can to make it happen. With that being said, the first thing I need to do is get qualified, so I do want to go back to school. When that's gonna be, I couldn't say. All right, guys. All right, so last question. Keep it up mate, you'll make it. This question's from Johnny Russell. Can you explain your method of training? It's not the typical regimen from what I've seen. Cheers. Well, no it's not. It's, it's really not a typical regimen. In fact, the, you know, the one thing I do say to people when they ask me about my training style and things is I go by feel and it's what I've always done. I don't, you know, it's, it's as far as it's, for something like a bench press, if you're really wanting to try and um, increase strength, and progress at the best rate possible. I think going by feel is not what you want to do. I think you really do want a program, a specific program for reps and sets to follow. I have never done that. It's something I, I know I probably should do, but like I said, man, I, I go by feel. It's just my personality, it's just the way it is. I'll roll up to the gym not knowing what muscle group I'm gonna train, <laughs> you know? And I'll have to think about it. And I'll have to think, well, what, what haven't I trained for the last four days? And that's pretty much what determines what I'm going to train. So that's as far as picking the muscle group. Whether I'm doing a five-day split, a four-day split, a three-day split, uh, it's, you know, I, I, I vary. A three-day split would be a push-pull legs. Four-day split, for example, might be, you know, chest and triceps, back and biceps, legs, shoulders and traps. Um, a five-day split would be, you know, biceps, triceps, legs, chest and back and then I throw shoulders in there somewhere, it might even be a six day split. So you know depending on that it's going to determine how many reps and sets I'm going to do for each muscle group. But with that being said, my, my most common you know, training split would have to be a five day split and that's going to be biceps and triceps on one day, it's going to be chest on one day, it's going to be back on one day, it's going to be legs on one day, it's going to be shoulders on one day. So all of those muscle groups I want to hit with the most intensity. After a big back session, I'm not going to want to go and do biceps. I'm too fatigued. I don't want to do that. I've been in the gym for at least an hour and you know, I'm, I'm going to leave. So as far as the exercises I, I do, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to go for at least one, if not two compound exercises. Following that, I'm going to go for at least one, if not two isolation type exercises. And that's how I do it. Each exercise, I'm going to want anywhere from two, three, four, even five hard balls to the wall working sets. So let's say we start off with a, a bent over row, I might do a set of 20 to warm up, I might do another set of 15 to warm up, and then we'll start adding the weight. Uh, and then, you know, I'll go down to three working sets of 10 to 12. Um, at the end, I'll do a drop set, that'll be the first exercise done, and I'll move on to the next. Following that, I might go to a seated cable row. Um, I'll do once again, two warm up sets, 20 reps, 15 reps, then the weight starts adding up, and I'll go for three good hard working sets at 10 to 12 reps, with a drop set to finish. Following that, we'll move on to the next exercise, which is gonna be an isolation movement. Possibly a pull down. Um, it could be, you know, a, it could be a really wide row. It could be, oh God, it could be a, well, do you call it a bent over barbell, a bent over dumbbell row in isolation exercise? Anything unilateral is, is pretty, pretty much sort of an isolation exercise as far as I'm concerned. You're trying to isolate that one part of the back. It's not like a big compound fitness exercise, but anyways, 
Uh, most probably I'd go for a bent over row with a barbell, I'd go for a seated cable row, and then I'd go for a, a, some sort of lat pull down. So once again, lat pull down, last exercise, isolation, we're gonna go 20, 20 reps, 15 reps, and then three, you know, even four working sets. Balls to the wall, by this point I'm fucking fatigued, as you can imagine, you know, even just bent over rows, hard sets of bent over rows, they're, they're very fatiguing, especially on the lower back, and you know, whether I, whether I do deadlifts or bent over rows, that's up to me, uh, but following that, it, you know, that's how I'd structure it. So three exercises, you know, 12, 15 working sets, that's hard fucking balls to the wall working sets, and as well as the, you know, six warm up sets, and as well as the three drop sets. So, yeah, you can see, you know, the volume's there. There's a lot of volume, and that's why I, I'd like to stick to one muscle group on that particular day. If I do it in the morning, I can come home, I can, you know, feel feel recovered, uh, eat, and then go back to the gym in the afternoon. That happens, you know, quite often if I've got a day off, but usually I'll go to work, I'll come home, 7.30 I'll be at the gym, I'll train till 8.45, and then I'll, I'll come home and have a meal post-workout meal at 9 o'clock and fucking before I know it, it's 12 o'clock and I've got to go to bed because I've got to get up for work the next day. So that is the question and answer video. Wow. Woo. I hope you've learned something, guys. I really do. I've enjoyed it. I've been looking forward to it. 10,000 subs, I'd have to say, would probably be the next opportunity to do a question and answer video and I'm hoping by then I'd have some, some more questions. Um, you know, I could have made up some questions for this, personal ones that you guys would probably find interesting. I might be able to clickbait the title, but really, you know, I'm, I'm not about that. I'm about being as transparent as possible, being real with you guys, as you guys know. I think that's what you appreciate and it's what we're going to do continuing on from here. So with that being said, I'm going to call it a day, say peace to you guys and continue on with what I'm going to do, which I have no idea what I'm going to do. I've got a day off, which is always a great feeling. Uh, but uh, I'd probably be safe to say I'm going to go to the gym. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Train hard, eat well, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.